Ronan placed his sword into its sheath and asked Adeshan if she is alright. Adeshan told Ronan that she is fine. She thanked him for saving her. Adeshan did not understand what was going on. She asked Ronan to tell her why he came to the cliff. Ronan told Adeshan that she does not need to bother herself with such details. Ronan stretched his hand out to Adeshan and told her that he needs her to lend him some of her time. Adeshan was surprised to hear this. Ronan told her that he wants her to tell him something. Ronan asked Adeshan to tell him the reason why she wants to become the Grand Commander. Adeshan was surprised to hear this. She did not understand why Ronan was curious about her goal. She asked Ronan to tell her why he wants to know her reason. Ronan told Adeshan that the reason is very important to him. He begged Adeshan to tell him. Adeshan was shocked to see how curious Ronan was. She decided to tell him her reason. With a sad look on her face, Adeshan asked Ronan if he has heard about the Knight of K9. Ronan immediately remembered the event which Adeshan was referring to. He asked her if she is talking about the invasion incident that took place 10 years ago. The invasion was carried out by the War Humans. Adeshan nodded her head at Ronan. She told him that the invasion was the first battle between the Empire and the War Humans. The battle took place because the Empire was trying to expand her territory to the north and the War Humans blocked the expansion. With a sad look on her face, Adeshan told Ronan that she lost her family during the night of the battle. The scene shifts and we see a younger Adeshan being held by her father. Adeshan looked up at her mother and brothers and asked them about where they were going. Adeshan's mother and brothers were startled when they heard Adeshan's voice. They did not know what to say to her. Adeshan's mother put herself together and moved close to her daughter. She told Adeshan that she and her sons have urgent work they need to attend to. Adeshan did not understand why her mother was acting weird. She urged her mother to tell her about the work. She asked her mother if she can join them. With a smile on her face, Adeshan's mother told Adeshan that she cannot come with them. She apologized to Adeshan. The woman stood up and asked her husband to take care of Adeshan. After saying this, the woman let go of Adeshan. Adeshan wanted to follow her mother, but her father held her back. The woman and her sons turned around and walked out of the house. This was the last time Adeshan spoke to her family. After that day, the knights of Adeshan's town were deployed to protect the breached castle walls because of a strategy the Empire came up with. Adeshan realized that the tactics the Empire used could not be called a proper strategy. The Empire simply drove the knights to their deaths. The strategy failed because the Empire failed to understand the strength of the War Human Coalition forces. The knights did their best, but it amounted to nothing. Adeshan's mother had to watch as her children were being ripped apart by the War Humans, as the wind blew around her. Adeshan told Ronan that the Empire and the War Human Coalition forces had a ceasefire negotiation after the battle. The Empire promised to give the War Humans their land, and the War Humans were incorporated into the Empire's forces. She told Ronan that even though her village was sacrificed to achieve the ceasefire, the knights were only given useless memorial monuments at a cemetery. Younger Adeshan stared at her family's grave with tears in her eyes. Adeshan noticed that a man next to her was shaking. The man who appears to have lost one of his hands burst into tears as he looked at his comrade's grave. The man did not understand why his comrades had to die if the Empire always planned to have a ceasefire agreement. The man screamed in pain. People referred to the battle as a noble sacrifice, but Adeshan disagreed. With a look of anger on her face, Adeshan told Ronan that nobody should have died. Adeshan believed that the Empire could have had the negotiations from the beginning. She told Ronan that there are a lot of strategies the Empire could have used if they wanted to win the fight. She told him that the Empire could have taken advantage of the geography to gain a favorable position. Adeshan clenched her fist and told Ronan that the deaths that occurred in the battle were not noble sacrifices. She told him that the deaths were unnecessary sacrifices that took place because of the incompetence of superior officers. Adeshan could not accept such an unfair reality. She revealed to Ronan that she cannot accept such a terrible truth. Ronan was surprised to hear this. He did not know what to say to her. Adeshan told Ronan that she is going to become the Grand Commander in order to stop unnecessary sacrifices. With a determined look on her face, Adeshan told Ronan that she will become a perfect Grand Commander. Adeshan believed that if she becomes a Grand Commander, no memorial monument will be created for people who should have lived. Ronan did not know how to respond to Adeshan. Adeshan noticed that she said some very heavy things. She quickly apologized to Ronan for spoiling the mood. Ronan told her that her topic was not cheerful. He thanked Adeshan for telling him the truth. Ronan told her that he finally understands her. Adeshan was confused when she heard this. She asked Ronan to tell her what he is talking about. 
Ronan stared at Adeshan. He finally understood that he could never make her give up on her goal. Ronan did not like this realization because Adeshan's current path was going to lead to her death. Ronan believed that it would not be right for him to simply watch Adeshan go down the same path again. Ronan did not want to experience the same pain he felt when he lost Saranti. While Ronan and Adeshan were talking, a heavy wind blows past them. When the two looked up, they saw a large tornado in the forest. Adeshan was shocked to see a tornado in the middle of the forest. She quickly recognized the mana of the person who created it. Ronan was surprised to see that his main opponent had already arrived. He believed that his opponent was impatient for him to be using his tornado. Ronan realized that he and Adeshan did not have enough time left. He asked Adeshan to listen to him. Adeshan was surprised to see that Ronan was not bothered by the tornado. Ronan asked Adeshan if she has ever heard about shadow mana. Adeshan told Ronan that she is not. She asked Ronan to tell her what it is. Ronan told Adeshan that shadow mana is something that is quite tricky to awaken. He told her that if she is able to fulfill the conditions for the awakening, she will be able to get significantly stronger. Ronan told her that someone he knows named the power herself. He told Adeshan that she reminds him of the person. The person who named the power is the older Adeshan. Ronan walked up to Adeshan and told her that she will be able to use the power too. He told her that he will need to make some research about it. He placed his hand on Adeshan's shoulder and asked her not to worry. With a bright smile on his face, Ronan assured Adeshan that he will help her. He told her that he will support her properly. He asked her to also do everything in her power to become the Grand Commander. Adeshan was shocked to hear this. She had never heard someone say something positive about her dream. Adeshan asked Ronan if he is serious. Immediately she asked her question. Ronan pushed her off the cliff. Adeshan was shocked to see this. She did not understand what was happening. She called out Ronan's name. With a smile on his face, Ronan told Adeshan that they have spoken enough for the day. He congratulated her on dying as the third place, as Adeshan slowly disappeared. Ronan told her that he will see her once he returns to the academy. Ronan was happy to see that he had taken care of one problem. He decided to take care of his next problem. Ronan turned around and asked his opponent if they are the only ones left on the island. Ronan's opponent came out of the forest. Next to him were the bodies of several students. As expected, Ronan's opponent is Shelafin. With a smile on his face, Ronan told Shelafin that his entrance was flashy. He asked Shelafin if he has taken care of all the other students on his way to the cliff. Shelafin told Ronan that he did. He told Ronan that they are the last two students on the island. Shelafin drew his sword and asked Ronan if he needs to explain the situation to him. Ronan also drew his sword and told Shelafin that he understands him. He told Shelafin that they can now have a proper fight. Ronan told Shelafin that they need to see who the strongest psychopath in the school is. Immediately Ronan said this. The two boys rushed to attack each other. The moment their sword clashed, the ground shook and a heavy wind blew. Ronan smiled as he and Shelafin pushed each other back with their swords. Guys we have come to the end of our video. If you guys want to support my channel, you can join my membership program. Being a member of the channel comes with different benefits and packages. The program will really help in improving the channel. Thank you for watching the recap. Let me know who you think will win the fight between Ronin and Shelafin.